And the man that put the bump on him was Matt Grimes, number 20. Let's correct something. We said Matt Grimes. It was Petway, number two. Grimes is number 20 that put the pop on Woods. End over end kick that Garner is going to watch bounce at the 35 yard line. Takes it on one high bounce at the 19. Comes up the right sideline and goes out of bounds at about the 34, 35 yard line. Lampson with a 58 yard kick, a 12 yard return and they say that Garner stepped out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Now we have Houston in the lineup. The J.C. transfer from Sacramento, but going deep is Gilbert looking for McDougal. Up his fingertips at the 17-yard line, and he had nothing but clear space in front of him. Oh, what a throw, and it would have been a great catch if McDougal, the senior speedster, could have come up with a double coverage from Divinity and Wells, but it was all McDougal. McDougal goes out, Oren Ford coming in for his first action of the 84 season. He missed last week's game because of academic problems, but they've been cleared up now, and he's ready to go. He split wide to the bottom of your screen. But the ball will go off to Story, the fullback piling his way close to the 35-yard line for a pickup of maybe five yards. Finally, LaShawn Wells, the quarterback, is able to come up and put a stop to him. Coach Joe Cap on the sideline, and he well remembers the last time the UOP Tigers won here at Memorial Stadium. He was the quarterback for the Cal Bears, and the running back for the UOP Tigers was Dick Bass. And that particular day, it was the Tigers winning 24 to 20. But what a great game! People still talk about it. You see him on the sideline talking to his senior quarterback, Gail Gilbert. Ron Story, the fullback, had to be helped from the field on a wheelchair, and he has some type of injury, I believe, to a knee. So that means that Scott Smith will come in and be the fullback, and he'll work in the backfield along with Dwight Garner. But Gilbert will go back and pass, setting up at the 27. What a catch in the middle by backup tight end Yancey Lindsey. Lindsey is the son of Ben Lindsey, the former University of Arizona basketball coach. Lindsay with his first reception of the year, 6'5", 200-pound senior, spelling Don Noble on that particular play. That is Galen Houston in motion, but the ball is going to go off to Smith, and Scott Smith gets close to midfield down at the 49-yard line. And pick up a four yards on the play. Cal trying to get into UOP territory for the second time in the game. We have 2.37 to go in the first quarter. No score yet. Galen Houston, the J.C. transfer from Sacramento, going in motion. Looking his direction, there is Houston taking it at midfield, trying to get by. One man is going to be twisted down to the ground, but he will get into UOP territory at the 49, but cannot get away from the safety, Kevin Green. Third and four, you ask Bob Cope about the strength of his ball club, and he'll tell you it's his secondary. He says Tommy Purvis and Kevin Green are two of the top defensive backs on the West Coast, particularly Purvis. Gilbert with plenty of time, throwing long for McDougal. It's going to be intercepted by Divinity. Coming up the left sideline, 40-45, and pushed out of bounds, just barely into Cal territory. It was intended for McDougal, but there was double coverage back there. Mike Reed was putting the pressure on Gail Gilbert, and we have an injured UOP player down. Let's give credit where credit is due. The pressure was not being put on Gail Gilbert by Reed. Reed was the man that, uh, that knocked Divinity out of bounds. It's first and 10 UOP at midfield. Good play action fake, going long and overthrown, intended for Thomas. Uh, let's, let's, let's just say he was the closest man there and it was overthrown by some 10, 15 yards. So after the pass interception, number four on the year for Gail Gilbert and an incomplete pass by Berner, we're set to go second and 10 at the 50, trying to go for Camp. The ball is incomplete. Camp on a crossing pattern with Walski and they got tangled up. So that'll bring up third and 10. So Paul Berner is still struggling. He had a rather rough opening game even though UOP defeated 
Reno. This is complete to Camp. Camp trying to get to the outside. But Wolski, Wolski is going to be wrestled out of bounds inside the Cal 15, out at the 13-yard line. Finally, Matt Grimes brings him down. There he is, Wolski, who they don't throw to very much. He is your H-back. Wolski had 32 pass receptions last year, but that's his first this year. He was rated the most improved player on the UOP squad, and that's Wolski in motion. But this is going to be Thornton. Thornton bulldozing his way inside the 10 down to a, maybe the 8 or 9 yard line. Camp, as we told you earlier, the tight end, number 85, came up with a pass reception to make him the all-time UOP receiver. The run is going to be nullified by illegal motion, so that pushes the ball back to the 18-yard line, so it'll be first and 15 for Burner. Quick drop, throwing for the right side, trying to go to Thomas. He's got it for the touchdown. Thomas working against Noble, went high in the air, and he hit it timed just perfectly, and the UOP Tigers are on the scoreboard with 57 seconds to go in the first quarter. They lead it 6-0. Ken Norgard will try to make it a 7-0 UOP advantage as the ball will be set right between the hash marks. The snap and the kick, it's partially blocked and it's going to go underneath. And it looked like it was Ken Petway who got a hand on the ball. So it still stays 6-0 with 57 seconds to go. UOP scoring first in this game. Ken Norgard has teed the ball up on the near hash mark as the Tigers take a 6-0 lead. We have 57 seconds to go here in the first quarter. It'll be Houston and Dwight Garner back deep to receive. Garner, who leads the conference in kickoff returns with almost 30 yards of return, takes it, comes up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles, and is going to be up to the 30-yard line. So that's where the Cal offense will start this series from their own 30. Cal Bears break the huddle, trailing 6-0 after the kickoff. McDougal comes wide to the near side, and Oren Ford to the right side, and this is going to be Scott Smith, the fullback, going straight up the middle for three or four yards. Smith replacing the injured Ron Story, who went off in the last offensive series with some type of leg injury. Scott Smith has come out, and for the first time this afternoon, we see the J.C. transfer Ed Barbero in. He'll be running at a fullback. He's number 49. Dwight Garner is in the backfield with him. And this is an out pattern intended, I believe, for Oren Ford. Yes, it does. Lost him momentarily on the sideline at about the 45-yard line. But again, Gail Gilbert overthrowing his man. Third down, the ball at the 34-yard line. Six for a first down. And Ford and Cockett working as the wide receivers for Gilbert. This time, here comes the pressure, and down he goes. Number 44, Jeff Pluck at the outside linebacker, was the man that wrapped up Gilbert and dropped him. Last week, Gilbert sacked nine times. And that's the end of the first quarter with that sack. Taking a look at the scoreboard after one period of play. It's the UOP Tigers 6, the University of California Golden Bears, nothing. Tom Ganzi set to punt on fourth down. He is set up inside his own 15-yard line at the 14. Here comes some pressure, and it's not a very good kick. It's off the side of his foot. It'll bounce, though. The California bounce at the 41 and roll down inside the 20, the 15, and close to the 13-yard line. So Ganzi getting pressure doesn't get it off as well as he'd like to, but the bounce goes his way, and the Tigers will start at their own 13-yard line. So the bounce of the ball gives Tom Ganzi a 57-yard punt, 20 of it coming on the ground. Opening moments of the second quarter, Ron Barr at Memorial Stadium with UOP leading Cal by a score of 6-0. This is the 12th meeting between the two teams. Last time the Tigers won, 1958. Burner with a quick drop, trying to go to the sideline. Cut nicely. No, they say his foot had touched out of bounds earlier. That was Woods. He tight roped the sideline, but he went out of bounds before the ball even got to him, so he became an ineligible receiver at that point. 
Woods, the 5'11", 185 pound senior, had a great moment last year. No time left on the clock when he caught an 85 yard touchdown pass that beat San Jose State in PCAA play. And he says that is the highlight of his career. Here's the draw play. This is Thornton sidestepping one man and jitterbugging his way to maybe the 17 yard line. Thornton again, I correct that. That's Mackey back in there. Mackey had gone down earlier with a leg injury and he's back in there now. So Mackey picks up four yards and he's back in there. So he's overcome whatever problem he had when he went out in the first quarter. Burner with plenty of time, almost intercepted by Gary Williams, and Williams had plenty of room in front of him. He came over in front of Tony Camp and almost picked it off. Lapson in punt formation now will be just shy of his own goal line, and Hanna comes across the line breaking the plane, but he's claiming there was movement on the left side of the offensive line for the Tigers, and we'll let Larry Thompson and his crew decipher who's right. Illegal procedure was against the Cal Bears, but it'll still leave UOP just about a foot shy of the first down. They won't try for it. As Lampson kicks this end over end, Dwight Garner backs off as he watches it bounce at the 43. It takes a good bounce, too, for UOP going inside the 30 and will be down between the 28 and the 29-yard line. So both kickers having a pretty good day here after Gansey gets off a 57-yarder. Lampson comes back with a 47-yarder to give the ball to Cal now at their own 29-yard line. Scott is in the backfield, and this is Scott. Did a good job of getting some yardage as he was hit at the original line of scrimmage. Nick Holt, the inside linebacker, backpedaling after Scott popped him pretty good. Scott Smith, the fullback. Galen Houston will be the running back. And Gilbert will sprint out. Doesn't see anything there and will slide down at around the 36-yard line. It'll be a pickup of nearly three yards. So in five quarters plus, the Cal Bears offense has only been able to score but one touchdown, and that's when Kevin Brown hit Noble in the final quarter against Arizona last week. Naked reverse for Gilbert, and Gilbert's going to be close to the first down, and I believe the spot they give him is going to be good enough for it just inside the 40-yard line. Twelve twenty-eight to go in the first half at 6-0 UOP, and it was good enough for the first down. You don't expect Gilbert to run with the ball. He's not exactly what you'd call fleet of foot, but it was good enough for the first down on that occasion. This is Barbero, the fullback, being stood up after a pickup of two and a half yards and then plowed down. Barbero, 6'2", 225-pound junior, and Joe Cap loves this kid. We have an injured UOP player down. Schaefer was the injured UOP player, and that deletes another man for the defensive line for Bob Cope's Tigers, and that could hurt. Barbero stays in at fullback. He'll work with Garner on this play. Good play action from Gilbert. Throws it into the middle, and it's going to be caught by McDougal. Diving catch for the first down at the Tigers' 42-yard line. McDougal, the fourth-leading receiver in the Pac-10 last year, gives the Bears a first down. Good drive underway for California now at the UOP 42. First and 10 play from Gilbert. Takes his time. Touch pass going to Garner out of the backfield and hauled down from behind at the 32-yard line by the inside linebacker, Nick Holt. And that's a matchup that Joe Cap wants to have. Fleet-footed.